So that isn't really the most attractive cover I've ever seen. However, needs must, and in a hurry, I was struggling to print anything with ABS on my 3D printer, because it's very, very sensitive to drafts, so... So the problem was the uh, printed model would stop sticking to the bed plate because of the breezes in the room, so I came up with that, but obviously paper is not the best solution. So I am going to make a new 3D printer cover and I will show you through the steps of how this is happening. So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to make the 3D printer cover out of and I actually thought I would like thick clear vinyl because you need to see what's going on. I am going to be doing, well I'm planning on doing now a sewing machine cover because I have quite a bit of this and what I decided to do was to, I wanted thick um, vinyl or whatever PVC, whatever you might call this. Um, the best thing I could find easily, which wasn't outrageously priced, is this shower curtain, which is not really thick enough on, its, on a single layer. However, they are pretty big. So, what my thought is, just to double up the layers, and I think that would be fine. But in reality, single layer might be okay. It's not terrible. I want it thicker, but maybe let's just work through this together. So this is a double layer. And I bought two of these, so there's more than enough to go around. So double layer is definitely quite decently thick. So I made my instructions earlier and there are one, two, three, four pieces to this. Okay, there's another side panel doubled up. So now we've got the top flap which is very long and the same width as everything else. And we don't so I've finished the top flap, I've put the edging on, the binding on, I've done it with the uh, fold away binding attachment and I'll show you that on some of the next parts as I get there. And what I've done now is I've attached, just with clips, the top flap to the back flap. And what you have to do is remember here that the half inch there is left on both sides so that the back flap can join to the side flaps. So it needs to be centered when you do that. So one thing is I found really helpful about this particular machine is if I sew in left hand position, the needle over on the left, the distance between the needle and the right edge of the walking foot is half an inch. So that makes seam allowances
plastic. It does slide a bit, but the walking foot is holding it in place. But it's also very stiff, so I'm not sure it doesn't get stuck against the wall or anything else. That's one bad thing about having this machine not in the or the uh, table not in the middle of the room. does tend to hit against the wall, but normally when you're not sewing stiff stuff, it's fine. It's not really a problem. Okay, get rid of this clip. So sewing this is a lot more active than in other times where I have to just sew away and do all what it wants in this case. Keeping the plastic down the hole, removing the clips, it's quite active sewing, but fun. to the flap. So, now what I found with this fat, this plastic, it works very well to just flip it and then sew it to sew it down. It, it sustains that fine. This is where it gets exciting on a small, small machine because this is not like a really large a portable walking foot, not a large walking foot, so when you're doing stuff like this it's quite exciting to have to uh, roll everything up. So all I'm doing now is just securing down the layers so they lie flat and neatly. Okay. Nothing more exciting. You didn't, don't have to do it, but I prefer to have neatness. So just back stitch the front and then off we go. So it feeds very well as you would expect and the pressure is not high at all. It's it's not slipping at all. Um, just very awkward. Zoom in again. Ooh, you're staring right through that, so. the front and the back panels joined. You can see it's sewn. Well, looks good. That's going to be the back. That's how it'll sit over top of the machine like this. So 
I need to now just attach the side panels. So I've sewn these sides to, to the back and what you can see is the flap that will tip over like that about an inch worth is now in place so I sew, sewed from the bottom to the top. Now what's really important with this particular part is that you must press the seam allowance that we're tacking down towards the front which is unusual but the reason is because of this you need to make sure the seam allowance goes that way so that the fold still remains secure like that because that is what secures to the top flap as we turn the sides all will become clear shortly but basically we're going to stitch just tack the uh, seam allowance down And it's time for the fun, which is the binding. So I will change threads and be back. So here we are with a swing away binder. Got a nice point on the end of that to make it easier to feed in. Just get a pair of scissors or a stiletto, anything. And there your binder is set, then roll it. Now it works very well with this uh, machine. What I would suggest is you need to start at the corner where the... Remember I said to leave the flap down at the edge where the back, the top, and the sides meet. So that would be the best place to start. So if I flip this over, that, then that edge gets into the swing way binder very well. So I think that's a bit low in the camera setting. That's probably a bit better. So that will now go into the swing way binder without any problems and under the feet. It's going to be very complicated. I might just pull the sewing table out a bit just to make it easier. It's just too much stuff wedged in. So, it's easiest if you start binding a bit in advance of everything and then do your reverse stitches. It just makes it easier. Stitches, perfect, and off we go. So because of this design, it gets in nice and close, it actually pushes it slightly back and forth. That's the advantage of the swing away binder. Okay, so I need to move my needle position.
get the idea and I'll just go around and around and around. It goes on forever. And I'll show you the finished product when I'm done.